Um, so we're talking about aftermarket steering, um, you know, the different components, ways that we can bolster it, beef it up, all that fun stuff. So let's start with, um, Ryan, tell us what, what components are included in the steering, in the steering, like when we say we're, we want to beef up steering, because I know that steering is so broad, right? Like it can really okay. include a lot of different components. Um, well, for the sake of the Jeep, since it's a solid axle, you're just going to have, uh, you're going to have your center link and your, your drag link. You know what I mean? So basically you're going to go from a, like a steering box down to usually the passenger side and that's going to connect to the outer knuckle. And then you're going to have another bar running from the knuckle below that to the other knuckle. And that's just going to, you're going to turn the wheel and that's going to turn the, the pitman arm and that's going to push and pull the wheel back in the, so that's kind of it. You're going to have some joints at each end you'll have a joint at the pitman arm that's going to be it's going to have grease in it it may be serviceable maybe not you know there's different types you know like the tire end style and the high joint style we're going to talk about and then you're going to have another one at the that comes off that end of the drag link right and then you're going to have adjustments within there so you can align everything um, so basically you got some moving parts um, you got some parts that are going to be uh, consumable potentially serviceable and uh, you're going to have some steel or aluminum bars, depending on how fancy you get. All the OE stuff is going to be non-serviceable, uh, still adjustable because you have to adjust for any kind of compensation for alignment. And they're all going to be steel. So once those things die off from the OE or per, you know beforehand, maybe if you get a giant tire in there, you just want some better steering, you could upgrade that. But once they die, uh, we recommend if you're gonna use it off-road or have a little more fun with it to upgrade that system. So that's kind of, okay. right. it's not too bad, it's not too complicated. Most people, there's a couple different names that people throw in there lingo-wise, but uh, we call them a drag link and a center link. I don't know, um, pretty straightforward. You're just tying that stuff together. Steering wheel, so you can okay. steer your shit. Yeah, it's okay. not too bad. Uh, <laughs> uh, Tim, let's talk about the, real quick, going back to the, like the OE steering kit or steering components um how are like are they are they you know i've I got a brand new rubicon but i also have you know a tmr steering kit i'm gonna switch it out when uh, yeah i know right we're, well, we're spring, very spring, very spring. spring yeah yeah <laughs> so, like, are we, are uh, you guys coming over or are you doing it at home are you doing? no no definitely coming are you kidding oh, me yeah. oh yeah. yeah i'll do it out there on the driveway <laughs> Sweet. um <laughs> Yeah. So, but let's talk about the stock ones. Are they, are they adequate or is it something like any off-roader should be upgraded? No, they're, they're adequate for um, a smaller size tire and moderate usage. I mean, if you've got a 33 inch, uh, maybe even a 35 inch tire and you don't do anything crazy, they're probably okay. Um, the JL and JT stuff's a lot beefier than the JK, which is beefier than what the TJs were like this stuff has all grown over time as well as the size and weight of the vehicles has grown. So it makes sense. They had to. Um, but I was surprised when I first saw jail, I was like, Oh, this stuff's pretty substantial. Like it looks pretty stout. Uh, but then we saw like premature failures and some of the, Oh yeah. Oh, you, um, tie rod ends. We'll call them like the ball socket on them failed like in quick time. So I would say, and what I often tell people, um, if you're just getting into it and getting into off road, go out, have some fun on the stock stuff. Be prepared for it to wear out, and when it does upgrade, um, don't don't replace it with another OEM kit because that that's just not uh, suitable for the longevity you should be expecting, and you can get from a steering kit. So stock stuff's fine. Start on that if that's what you got. That's cool. Uh, but yeah, definitely you are going to want to upgrade when one of those components wears out. Just replace it with something better. Okay, got it. All right, cool. So that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, that's I did notice that with the the JL versus my JK is that it looks anyway yeah. much beefier. Like, oh. and, you know, it's it's much um, thicker in terms of the sizing, much more substantial. But, hey, hey like you say, there's been premature uh, failures, right? So, so I haven't that. killed mine yet, but I haven't really used it a ton either. Like, mm. I think I got 45,000 Ks on it, but I only have so many Ks with the giant 42s. Right. And I think I've only really four-wheeled it like twice to be honest i just hadn't we haven't been able to get out but uh so i mean we're gonna change it out but i'm i i might just leave it until it dies just to see for our own peace of mind and be like i wonder what we get out of it you know and there'll be variances right there's gonna be some 
fun Friday builds or, you know, some defective parts out there, like from a whole production standpoint where maybe mine lasted six months longer than someone else's or something like that. But yeah, definitely. Okay. All right, cool. Well, Ryan, let's go back to your, you mentioned like, um, like serviceable versus not, or, you know, yeah. greased versus whatever. Tell us about that. Like what, what is that? Well, the, the OE is going to want them to, to be consumable and they're going to want you to buy parts, right? So they're not going to allow you to maintain them. So whatever grease came from the factory, you can't access that and uh, anymore. Like a long time ago, they used to have all kinds of like Zerk fittings everywhere. So you could just grease all your stuff and fuck, there's still like cars from the thirties and forties out there rolling around. You know what I mean? Like, so they're like, Oh, that was a mistake. Um, <laughs> we're not, we're not selling enough cars, man. We got to make these things die in three to five years. You know what I mean? Yeah. So right. that's kind of it. So that's kind of their room. So you look under your new vehicle, you're going to have nowhere to do any maintenance. And uh, I think a lot of people used to do more maintenance on their own than they do now by far. So it was just kind of a culture thing. And from them is profitability. So um, they're looking at, you look at that stuff, you can't fix it. So once that grease wears out or, you know, maybe you pinched a, like a rubber seal and then there's water getting in there, you can't force it out. So that's just, just dies fast. Right. But when you get to the aftermarket stuff, obviously people want to provide value, right? So you're going to have that ability to service those again, right? So um, really from from the standpoint of that, so if you're doing a whole bunch of off-road and mud and got some water and this, that, and the other, you're going to want to go over your whole Jeep, but you're going to want to <clears throat> pump new grease in there, right? And just kind of inspect it. And um, That being said, when you get it, um, most of the stuff might have just like enough grease for assembly, so you probably want to make sure that you grease. I don't know if your Heims come dry, Tim, or they have assembly lube or if they're actually grease, grease. But uh, I know a lot of things aren't, which is totally fair. But just don't forget to put that step in there because there's a hydraulic force in there too, right? So you're going to want to fill that with grease to like maintain that or you're going to have a lot of like end play and then that's going to toast it, right? Toast right. It. And we're talking... Uh the grease and like tie rod ends and right yeah and stuff, right, right. Also, yeah yeah tie rod ends and all that stuff like <clears throat> you're gonna want to have that and i don't know some people have specific greases you know and there are different types of grease for different applications um but i don't know maybe tim can touch on that with if you guys recommend a certain grease for your kits or not i, I mean i don't remember what you recommend you're right there so you might as well tell people for yeah, sure yeah, I mean, we prefer the uh, Amsoil makes a grease that's got a high molly content. Um, right. It basically just helps with shock loading. Um, you can use any general purpose wheel bearing grease. Um, I mean, the most important thing is you are purging water and debris out. So if you're out on a trail ride and you're, you're running through lots of water, mud and whatnot, like Ryan says, that can get in there if you have a seal that's not 100%. So afterwards, as part of your preventative maintenance, you want to you wanna grease that. So whether that's like one of the cartridges for our two and a half ton kits, you can see there's a Zerk in there. Um, that's simple. Hit that on your Jeep, purge the old stuff out. Same like if you're doing one of our builder kits, I don't have a Zerk on there, but you can see on this traditional style tie rod end, boom, hit that grease fitting, wait until you see grease purge out past the seal. And then you know the stuff's in as good as condition and maintain as well as, uh, as you can do it. Okay, amazing. No, that's super helpful. Um, and maybe we should, let's talk about the difference because it's something I've always wondered. Um, <laughs> the difference between your, like, the the tie rod end and a Heim. Sure. So, like, a uh, tie rod end, uh, similar to this, this is, like, what you're going to see in your Jeep from OE. So, uh, a nice advantage to it is, yeah, it can be greased. It's a serviceable part. Um, another nice thing about it um, is it's tapered. So, this taper locks into a taper on your knuckle that helps keep it in position. Um, that's a good thing. Uh, drawback to these is cross compatibility. So if you want to start building your own steering kit, now you've got to ream your knuckle to accept this taper. Um, and this stuff needs to be right. You can't mess around. I see some people say, oh, that, that'll that fit that taper. And yeah, maybe you put it in the hole, tightened up that nut, um, but that hasn't properly uh, locked in there. So that's, that's terrible. So you got to make sure this stuff matches if you're building your own steering kit. Um, We've got inserts so you can drill out knuckles, weld in inserts to get the correct taper. Um, we got lots of little problem solvers to help do that. But uh, a Heim joint, uh, we've shown them before, it's a spherical bearing. It's non-greasable. So when that Heim joint wears out, it's a consumable. So literally screw it out of the bar, throw it out, buy a new one, put it in. One advantage to them is it does just use a straight bolt. Um, so if you're buying a Heim joint with a three-quarter inch hole, you just got to drill your knuckle out to three-quarter, bolt it up, use a high-quality fastener, 
you won't have any issues. Uh, but again, they're not, not a serviceable part. So oftentimes people will ask me what's best for my climate or usage. So it just depends on you're in Southern sunny, Southern California. Um, and you're never, obviously never going to see any street, any, uh, salt on the roads. There's not much mud out there. Um, you're probably fine to run a, a Heim joint or rod end cause you live in a dry climate. If you're somewhere in the Northeast, like us, you want something greasable. So that's when we get into like our two and a half ton cartridges. Cause they can be greased the tie rod end I showed earlier or our lifetime Himes. Cause again, it's a greasable joint. So you can purge the old stuff out. And like Ryan saying, you're going to get more life out of that part. Hey, okay. Tim, right on. What, what do you find? Uh, do you find any challenges with sand in the, yeah. in the non non serviceable? Like they're going to grind out the, like the nylon wash, like it, yeah, for, or whatever's in there. Like that it would depend. I would say sand on its own. Not so much. I don't think it's going to permeate the seal. Um, okay. so if desert, I wouldn't be too concerned with yeah. if it's sand mixed with some water, obviously then yeah, I think it's going to get in there and, and cause some wear for sure. Okay. So t I tell people with Himes, keep them clean. Like even if you, if Himes are stronger than tie red ends, that's, and they provide totally. more yeah. misalignment. So that's an, a, another big reason. A lot of people choose those, but keep them clean after your trail rides done, try and wash them off. Don't be that guy cruising around town with the Jeep covered in two inches of mud. Um, you might think right. it looks cool to your coworkers and <laughs> maybe, maybe it does to them, but uh, it's killing all your parts, leaving that, <clears throat> leaving that debris on there. It's, it's, right. it's, uh, it's working its way past seals for sure. All right, cool. Okay, awesome. All right, well, I think this is probably good, as good a time as any to let's talk about the product of the week, considering we're sort of talking about your uh, cartridges there for for your uh, your steering kit. So let's talk about those guys. Sure. So uh, we manufacture uh, two and a half ton steering kits for JK, JL, and JT. Um, if you've got a TJ or earlier vehicle, um, we've got some builder kits for you, but we mainly focus on the new stuff um, with these. So material wise, we're using seventy seventy five aluminum. Uh, inch and three quarter diameter. So this stuff brings the beef in terms of the tie rod end itself and why we call it a two and a half ton. If you look at this guy I showed earlier, that's the thread on a one ton tie rod end. It's seven eighths in diameter. This is the thread on a two and a half ton oh, tie rod end. So that. Inch that and a quarter thread huge. diameter. So yeah. You'd, you'd feel the difference. You'd For oh, sure. If, if, you're, if you think you're a boss and you're one ton, <laughs> um, this is you. This is the guy she tells don't you not to worry about. I mean, oh. That's that's kind of the one you want. So yeah, it's inch and a quarter thread. Don't um, forget to lube it. Don't exactly. Don't forget to lube it with that good AMS oil. Um, and then yeah, and then these cartridges thread in. So you can see that's threaded on the outside. That is simply, serious. That screws in right here. Back. So hey Tim, on assembly for the yeah. cartridge, do you recommend anything on those threads? Yeah, uh, on the cartridge here, I would use any C's for sure because this yep. okay. this can come out right. So. This thread here, for the most part, is going to stay in the Jeep. You're going to set the alignment. Um, these bars won't bend. If they do, something went nuclear under your Jeep. You probably got an amazing story. But uh, right. yeah. they're going to stay put, have a professional alignment done. <laughs> One of the nice things with our kit is all you have to replace is this cartridge. So when this wears out, you screw that out, thread a new one into there. You haven't changed the position of these threads on your center link, tie rod, or drag link. So your alignment hasn't moved. Um, so that's a really nice feature for, for DIY guys or even for shops. Um, I know you're a pro, you would check it, but uh, a lot of places don't have that equipment. Um, if you're using our cartridge style, it's just going to come out. New one's going to drop back in place based on the fact it's a taper. It's going to land exactly where it used to be. So pretty straightforward. Are you going to put any, uh, like you want to put any C's on that, the tie rod end to the rod? Yeah, on, uh, yeah, for sure. On that guy, yeah. we recommend. I'd recommend anti C's on the threads where they're down inside the rod. Totally. The yeah. And then the jam nut, clean the anti C's off under the jam nut. Put thread locker on there. Right. Um, and then it's we like, do like like a red locker or like a blue locker. Or you? Uh, we recommend blue on my own stuff. I would use red because I mean it's it's on there. Lock it down. You don't need right. that thing to move for sure. And we machine. I don't know if you could see it there. Like a wrench yeah. flat. So it's That's easy for you. Yeah. Grab yeah. that with a wrench. Grab the jam with the wrench. You can tighten them against each other. It makes for pretty easy, uh, easy adjustments. And the little, uh, the little ball mills left hand thread. I imagine. Sorry, the, uh, the the little radius ball mill there, like where you dug in there. Yes, exactly. You're seeing the groove. Totally good yeah. question. So yeah, yeah, that groove there indicates left hand thread. So you yeah. know that's a reverse. Other end of the bar, she's smooth. a smoothie. Yep. Yeah. So that's so, a right hand thread. So yeah. don't 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 go trying to force the right and the left in. No, no, no. <laughs> it's, it's not broken. You just forgot to look at the little groove. Yes, exactly. You forgot to ID that groove. It's not <laughs> it's not a bad idea if you figure it out, even maybe put an arrow or uh or some sort of marker on there if that helps you out. I've seen lots of guys kind of add a visual aid so they don't uh really? make that mistake or struggle with that. Yes. <laughs> on their hand, they got a little picture, diagram. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. 
And I question because you used to, and I could be wrong, but do you still carry both steel and aluminum or only aluminum? You, no, that's a great question. We used to. Um, so we would do like a heavy wall DOM, same thing, inch three quarter diameter. I think there were five sixteenths wall. We'd thread them and then powder coat them. Um, honestly, there wasn't much cost savings advantage because the powder coating added a secondary step. We had to outsource that. Um, whereas the aluminum ones are just machined here. Uh, true for the aluminums superior um it's all we'll run under our race machines and we've learned that over years um common for doing like a builder kit is this that's inch and a half quarter wall dom um it's stout it'll bend though for sure if you hit it and it's bent um it might stay that way it too, will if stay, you it it will up, stay right? bent exactly you, you yeah. put a frown in this guy it's going to stay frowned you can pull it back to straight it's weaker now it's been damaged um the 7075 aluminum links like i showed earlier it's a memory alloy. It'll actually flex. Like you can put a jack under it, pump it up a couple inches, take the jack off and return to straight. Um, it's awesome. like, it's absolutely the best material you could use for building, whether that's steering links, control arms, um, custom control arms, track bars, you name it. So that's, that's why we did away with the steel links. Um, not that they were a bad product, but the aluminum far superior and very little cost difference. So that's, that's all we focus on now. Amazing. Oh, that's really cool. Um, that's awesome. Okay, cool. So, We'll link it up in the, the show notes, but definitely check out TMR. Check out GBF. I think we have them up at GBF.com as well. Um, so I think either way, <laughs> you'll find them somewhere. Just Google them. You know, uh, I think they're sort of legendary. They really are kick-ass. So if you're listening to this and you can't see it, I say jump on YouTube or go to Marzimov.com. Take a look at them. Look at them in the video because they really it, it's, it shows you the perspective of how beefy these things are. They really are killer. So, um, yeah, those are amazing. Really awesome product. Let's talk about real quick. Uh, I'll, Tim, I'll get. Sorry, I have two more questions. We'll, we'll oh. be quick. Tim, I'll ask uh, you first, and then we'll go to Ryan. But uh, DIY versus bolt-on solutions. What uh, What are your thoughts on that? Depends on your skill level. Um, if you can cut, grind, weld, fabricate, um, presumably bend tube as well. Uh, if you put a DIY kit in your Jeep, you can definitely save some bucks because um, ultimately it's you putting in the labor to do that versus buying a bolt-on solution. If you can't do that stuff or you just want um, extreme ease of use and functionality, then yeah, a, a bolt-on kit or a solution is going to work for you. But yeah, like if you're DIY in it, it's really that DOM we looked at earlier, some threaded tube adapters, uh, tie rod end we looked at earlier, and these parts just slip together, weld that up. Um, measure for your links. It's not hard if you have that skill set. If you don't have that skill set, um, don't consider it because if you have to pay a shop to do that or you're going to pay a buddy to do that or <laughs> if your buddy's going to learn on your steering system, that's Ugh. the worst fucking thing in the world. Um, so yeah, if you've, if you've got fabrication skills, DIY, DIY route can save you some money. Um, if you don't have those skills, just look for a, a properly designed and engineered solution. It's going to save you grief and you know, it's, it's, you know, it's going to work. It's uh save you a lot of head scratching as well. You yeah. don't offer the aluminum and DOI, right? We, no, we don't. So you can buy all the pieces from us. If you want to make your own, like we sell all that two and a half ton stuff right? individually. So you can buy these bits. Uh, if you've got a metal lathe, um, with some decent capacity, cause we're talking large thread sizes. Um, you can make your own aluminum links, but uh, no, we don't do custom aluminum links or that. So most of okay. the DIY with stuff we sell is DOM tubing, the tube adapters, oh, yeah. that that route. Yeah. Nice. Okay, cool. All right. Next question, Ryan. I, actually, I'll ask you both your opinion on this. Uh -oh. Steering stabilizers. Sure. What, what are your thoughts on that? I'm throwing the steering stabilizer in there. Steering I know a lot of people like throw that in as like, oh, you have you have uh, death wobble or whatever. Just put a no. steering stabilizer in place. No, it's not. It, it's mostly for on on road use, like all on road use, and more like higher speeds. You're just it's just helping you sh like shock load the the tire movement. You know, like the road crown or imperfections in the road. You got that bigger tire, so you got that counterweight. So it's going to come through the steering wheel, right? So the stabilizer is exactly what it says. It's going to stabilize that like quick impact right so you're not going to feel that reverberation through the wheel right so if you're driving with a steering stabilizer and you got a big tire and you hit a hit a little bump you're going to feel it right so let's say you we did it like that or your or your tires are slightly out of round or they're real big mud tires and it's always going to be like a little bit like depending on the stabilizer there's ones you can adjust settings for like just adjust the valving like stronger weak and that's going to take that out so all of a sudden so instead of doing this all the time you might just get a little one right um that's basically you know, without getting super technical, that's basically what it does. It's yeah. mostly for, uh, 
I think it takes wheel feedback out of uh, the road conditions, and uh, it's a basically for on road comfort, in my opinion. Okay. Do, and Tim, same thing. Sort of. Yeah. Same idea. Run, yeah. Run one; it'll help dampen some uh, road yeah. noise. Unless you can't fit one for like packaging purposes, um, but like we make these clamps to accept yep. stabilizers or at ram assist. Um, they're popular as hell because yeah, if, if you can fit it, run it; it'll help you. Uh, it'll help you on road driving for sure. It makes things just a little more comfortable. Awesome. Amazing. Sorry. I digress a little bit here again, but Ram assist. Let's, let's talk mm. about that real quick versus like a steering stabilizer. Well, What's there's the it's another, it's another package. Well, I mean, you're, you're hydraulically assisting that conversation and then it's, that's more for big, heavy tires and low speed turning. Right. And you know, uh, just getting in a spot and your pump just can't keep up. Right. And, or you're, you're stuck between something and you just, it's just, it's just overpowering the pump. So you're at a manual steer at that point and you're toasting everything. Right. Um, so like a, like a Ram assist, some people drill and tap boxes and different things like that. And you can buy kits that are fully designed with a pump to keep up with that box, to keep up with that Ram, all that fun stuff. Right. Um, I would go Ram assist if you're driving the vehicle and you want to go four wheeling and you got some big tires, like 37s to 42s. And you're going to want a Ram assist. If it's a buggy, this, that, and the other, you're not like racing high speed. In my opinion, you're just going to crawl around. I mean, full hydro is probably fun for you. You know what I mean? Um, you just lose that road feel. You feel, you lose all that performance with a full hydraulic system. So, I mean, I think the best answer is going to be the Ram assist. Um, we are going to do one, uh, you know, soon somewhere. I'm not supposed to say it. I guess I think I just thought about that. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> we'll Don't tell some, anyone. Some phantom vehicle will put something on it to do with that. But anyways, uh, no big deal. Uh, yeah, that's kind of it. Yeah, like uh, like we're pushing our luck. Like I didn't put one on the one Jeep and we have some really aggressive tires. Uh, you just run out of power to to steer your wheel. And when and if you're stuck in a weird spot, it's really nice to be able to steer. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 for sure. But, okay, uh, sounds like we, we might be able to do uh, maybe even a whole episode on uh, getting into like how those work and for you sure. know, when you might need one. Okay, so we'll leave it as is for now. But basically what we're saying is um just to really quickly recap the oem uh, depending on what you know jeep you have uh, is 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 suitable but uh if you're if you're doing some off-roading or of course if you've already broken it or uh, bent uh part of your steering then uh it's time to upgrade of course uh we all i think highly recommend the tmr customs um two and a half ton because it is just badass like this, that's all there is to it and i wasn't um, paid to say that no right absolutely <laughs> we'll, get, we'll get our cash later no i'm just kidding <laughs> um yeah no honestly it really is i mean badass just take a look at it there's no question yeah it looks uh, great. when yeah. we go and do our install maybe we can uh you know show the perspective of how big it is like if you look at, actually on the website you have a a, a soda can right yeah that yeah. is beside it like it is it is huge it is beefy it is killer it it is worth three it. guys no comparing question. shafts. That could there, be you the <laughs> there you go. Three guys, one shaft. I don't know. Oh, that's um, even worse. That's a... <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, awesome. So, uh, yeah, if anyone has any questions about uh, steering, steering components, steering kits, etc., of course, uh, about Tim's kit, you can get us at uh, podcast. Gb. Uh, sorry, podcast at gb. Com. Of course, you can uh, ask us any questions on different social channels. Just make uh, write a comment, um, and. Uh, yeah, of course, catch us at uh, our Facebook group, which is where we generally do these live. So that's uh, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Jeep podcast. Or you can catch us on Instagram at Jeep podcast. And of course, lightbarsandloggers.com. You can catch us there as well. Um, so we appreciate everyone who watched it today. Of course, everyone who uh, is going to watch it after the fact. And of course, everyone listening on Apple Podcasts and Google Podcasts and Stitcher and all that fun stuff as well. With that said, um, I think we went a little long. Thanks, Tim, for joining us and sticking around. I know we're a little bit late, uh, but uh, everyone's got to get get back to the real world, do some actual work. So yep. I appreciate it. As always, again, I learned a ton. I uh, Hopefully uh, everyone listening did as well. You and learned a we one ton steering. I yes. learned a two and a half you ton learned a two, steering. You learned a two and a half ton steering. You learned lots <laughs> right. of tons. I learned a lot yeah. about shafts yeah, like and shaft sizes tons today. Tons right now. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, thanks again, everyone, uh, for being here. And thank you guys. And uh, until next week, I guess uh, keep that rubber side down, as they say. See you. All right. Oh. <laughs>